So for colored pencils, there are different techniques that you can do to achieve different looks. So this little handout is just going to help you practice some of the different ways you can make marks and essentially color with colored pencils. Uh, remember, depending on the toned paper that you're choosing or if you wanna test out the different papers, aside from just working on white, color pencil looks amazing on toned paper. And of course, then this paper's white, so you can see what it looks like there. And then I just wanna show you this book too, if you ever wanna check this out. This is a really great book that just shows you the different build up and layering of colored pencil in different textures, which can just be helpful to see the process because again, color pencil is all about layering. This is a great example uh, because you're starting with just, you know, a simple form, something reflective, pewter, and then starting with just light layers and then starting to fill in those darker shadows and mid-tones you know, and then eventually you're seeing the highlights and a full range of value. And remember, color can have value too. Color does have value. It is one of the components of color. So just keep that in mind. This is a good example too. Again, just this little, starting with light, light pressure and then building it up. Because again, color pencil is all about layers. So if you wanna check this book out, this is um, really, really great. So for the color pencils here, you can either use your Blick color pencils or you can use the Prismacolor pencils. So each set has 12 and then in addition, there's also the colorless blender. And then this tool here is just like a little... Um, you know, stippling, burnishing tool that you can use for the impressed lines. So to start with pressure, pressure is simply referring to, of course, how sharp the pencil is. So I happen to have some that are dull already. So, and again, some of this stuff is, while it may seem like common sense, it's just good to review because it's just different ways to make the pencil, different approaches to make the pencils look differently. So you can change their appearance based on what texture or look you're trying to achieve. So sometimes just practicing these simple things is just a good little reminder, even for myself, gives me good ideas. So just with some pressure um, and sharpness, I have some dull pencils like I mentioned. So pressure, of course, you can combine these two components together and then you get a whole other range of possibilities. But with pressure, I'm just going to use my red, uh, my crimson red Prismacolor pencil. Uh, you can use any color here. And I'm just going to start with a light, nice light pressure, just super, super light. And the key with color pencil, honestly, is consistent pressure. Whether you're doing a light, light pressure or a heavier pressure, you want it to be nice and consistent and your lines just, they can go in the same direction depending on the way you're shading. But for this, I did just kind of go back and forth to a diagonal. And then as I work my way this way, I'm just gonna increase my pressure just because I wanna get a feel for how I can change the color pencil just based on, again, the pressure that I'm applying. And of course, there's more than four different ranges of pressure, but you know, again, this just gives you an idea and then of course, heavy pressure. Now heavy pressure, you typically wanna avoid because you don't wanna smash down the fibers of your paper. Now, I'm just working on printer paper here, so it's um, you know not really that big of a deal. But you know, sometimes we want things to be in a single layer. Sometimes there is a time and place for that. So we do want things to be heavy pressure. Or if we're burnishing something or blending something, we might wanna bring heavy pressure with a final layer. But oftentimes color pencil, you're going to be around here building up very soft layers with pressure. 
All right, so sharpness, again, as I was mentioning before, I've got um, some dull pencils and now this one's a little bit dull too. So sharpness, I mean, there's some different things you could do here. Like I mentioned, you could play with sharpness and pressure or sharpness where you're just, um, pressing down into the paper with the tip of your pencil, or perhaps you're shading back and forth. So pressure can, sorry, I'm mixing up my pressure and my sharpness today. Uh, sharpness can look different. So again, it's just kind of playing around with some of the different pencils. And again, if I go all the way to this range, I'm gonna grab a super, super sharp pencil. This is sharp, never been used from the box, but I could also use my pencil sharpener and change, you know, the point a little bit more and make it a little bit sharper. So sometimes it's like you want little sharp points on your pencil to get certain textures. Or maybe I'm shading with just the tip of my pencil. So you can play around with just the different sharpnesses, see what that feels like. Like I mentioned, this is just all experimental. You really can't do anything wrong. It's just trying out different things and seeing what you like, what you might want to use in a drawing. So that's just playing around with sharpness. And you know, really, <laughs> in some respects, it's like you can't tell a ton of difference between some of these sharpnesses, like in this range. But you know, it's just, again, something to be aware of. I'm gonna scooch over here. So directional lines and curve lines, again, it's these could be kind of similar things or just, again, things for you to think about as you're using these colored pencils. So directional lines, for example, could be if you have a shape and you want to turn that shape into a form, making it look 3D. Thinking about directional lines or contour lines following the direction of a shape or all going in the same direction. So there's some different ways you could approach directional lines. So for this, again, this is just would be like a contour following the direction of a form. I'm just spacing these out and making them more of a contour to start. But then also what you could do here is you could continue to fill this in. So it becomes solid, but you're still following the direction. And then as I'm uh, filling this in, this is where I can go back and think about pressure or sharpness. And I'm picking up a little bit of my um, texture underneath with those uh, toned papers. So uh, anyway, I could kind of keep going with that. I could also go cross contour and bring lines in the other direction, but you get the idea. That's uh, just thinking about the direction of the object. Curved lines. So, you know, a lot of times we think about when we shade, we go back and forth, side to side. So sometimes when we're shading or bringing in lines or marks into a drawing, we want to curve lines. So I could actually, you know, draw the lines and curve them and just kind of show you, you know, sometimes it's fun to bring in some other colors. Into your lines 
or this could even mean, you know, I'm when I'm shading, I'm actually curving the move the lines, right? I'm, you know, notice my hand movement as I'm uh, shading here. Okay, so this could be curved lines. So here we have overlapping strokes. Overlapping strokes, I did that a little bit with the curved lines. That's just this idea that colored pencils are meant to be blended and layered and not, you don't have to use just one color. Uh, you can create lots of other colors and textures. So sometimes that involves laying down overlapping strokes. And again, just going back to this idea of our pressure and sharpness. So again, that plays a factor in how things could look. So right here, I've got some pretty sharp lines. Now here I might get some better examples going of uh, these lines here. So overlapping. Again, I could also have them be a little bit lighter, closer together. Again, this is going to be an example of the pressure change and sharpness change. So you can change how that looks depending on how you overlap and how you apply pressure and sharpness. Overlay, um, just this idea of working light to dark. Now it could be light to dark, meaning like using yellow first, then blue if you're changing colors, but it could also mean overlaying a light pressure with a heavier pressure over time too and building up color that way. So again, a lot of these little techniques can be applied in lots of different ways. So it's just very experimental. So overlay, I could take my yellow. I am going to just do a color change just because I think it'll give a better example. But So I'm starting with yellow, just nice, even, light, consistent pressure. Then bringing in some green, apple green over top. Nice, light pressure. So this is where I can start to alter and change my colors. With, by overlaying them. And you can blend them later. I'll get to that later. But for now, let's just take a look at how I can alter and change colors. So even if you only have 12 color pencils, by lightly overlapping them and overlaying them, you can create whole ranges of colors. I'll just put here, just to show you, go half and half. So two, if you're shading something, want to darken something slightly, overlaying colors can be a great way to do that. Now I guess layering in a sense is, is similar to overlaying because you are layering colors when you're overlaying them as well. But layering just could be the buildup of a single color too. So let's take a look at that for layering. So I just have a violet here and I'm going to just start and I'm gonna fill in this box with a nice light even pressure. Just fill this in. All right. So with this one, what we'll do is I'll just scooch in just a little bit and I'm going to apply a second layer and then work my way to the right. Now, of course, just keep in mind, you can alter how this texture looks with the sharpness and pressure of your pencil. Right, and then I'm just going to just sort of repeat this process by layering. Right, and notice we can basically create a value scale or a shift here. Okay, now you can blend this or um, you can overlay other colors on top of here. But just to show you, by layering colors, the single color, we can just, again, create a shift 
and in value with a nice even texture. All right, scumbling is, again, a circular motion instead of back and forth. Again, sharpness and pressure will change how this looks, but the general idea of scumbling is to do a circular motion. Now, you can do big open circles where it's more of a scribbling or you can do little tight circles, but the key here is just consistent pressure with your pencil. You don't want to all of a sudden press down and um, get a uh, dark edge, which I did just to show you. I picked up a little bit of this edge of the tape, so that's why that happened on mine. It wasn't because I pressed down. But when you have something under like this with edges, it picks it up. So again, I can scumble, I can overlap, layer, I can apply, you know, any of these textures and techniques that we've previously talked about in combination. That's why there's so many possibilities. So again, this little handout is just exploration, just getting a, a hang of some of these things. Hatching is, in a sense, similar to overlapping strokes in, in a, the way that you do the lines, just sort of... Um, parallel next to each other. I actually use a black here. But there's different ways you can hatch. I mean, honestly, hatching, so just to show you a little bit here, could look like this. It could be looser, open. You can change directions. But they're all little parallel lines, essentially. And so you can hatch, hatch, hatch over top and layer them but you're basically just making little lines with your pencil. I actually know someone who likes to hatch and scumble kind of together and creates a combination. So again, a lot of these techniques you're going to mix together and combine. This is just the exploration, experimentation, just getting a, a feel for how these pencils work how they can build up layers, all that good stuff, okay? So there's hatching. Cross hatching is essentially you're doing the same thing except for you're then going to cross your lines. So this could be left so you see this texture. Sometimes seeing the cross ha hatching texture can be really nice. Sometimes you want it to be overlapped so much that it's blended and you can cross hatch in all different directions. Just like with graphite pencils, if you're cross hatching in all different directions, the, the action of you layering the pencil creates a blend and also darkens. You can also, with cross hatching, mix colors as well. You could do a sort of an optical mixing. Like if I've got some violet and some blue, I can create like a, a blue violet sort of an optical mix where it's not actually mixed, but it's uh, two colors layered over top. It's a little tough to see, but you know, you get the idea. Burnishing is basically blending and you can use a white or the colorless blender. You could also burnish with another color, but it is basically burnishing is where you are you know, you can begin with a nice light pressure and you can use any of the scumbling, hatching, cross hatching, overlapping, overlaying, any of those techniques. But you just kind of, you want to start with a light pressure. So I'm just going to mix a little yellow, a little apple green. Just create a little bit of a, a blend. And I'm, I'm seeing a little bit of the strokes in here. bit okay so I'll do half with the colorless blender half with white so this half to up here is with a colorless blender and so now I'm just applying a little bit of a heavier pressure this is like the, the final step I really can't apply any more color after this it's almost like you're you're kind of sealing it in uh, burnishing it all together 
And then here is the white, and the white does also lighten. All right, so there is burnishing, and you can play with different color combinations, play with the toned papers, uh, but again, the act of burnishing is, is you know, giving it that last kind of final layer, smudging all the other colors underneath together, and it really kind of gives it like a little shiny, shiny look. Stippling is just essentially, it's like pointillism. It is just little dots, and you can physically draw the little dots if you want to, or you can just tap. Stippling uh, is definitely a little time consuming. So sometimes, you know, I'll just do it for little areas or a little bit of texture. But uh, again, it's just a way to make a mark. So I just wanted to show you that. You could also layer colors together. You could do the whole optical mixing idea. So stippling can, can be fun. And there's, there's different things you could do. And sometimes you can actually purposely let your pencil make the little kind of tadpole little lines because, you know, sometimes tapping your pencil creates sort of an interesting texture. So that's the whole idea with stippling. Impressed lines is pressing down into your paper and then adding a layer of color over top so the white shows through or whatever color paper you picked shows through. So I have these little uh, tools here, these little stippling tools, there's uh, two sides. So impressed lines, you're just pressing into it. I'll just do some, just some little crosshatch lines. Too, nothing too fancy. And then here, yeah, I'll do some little swirls with the smaller side, just kind of overlap them. So this would be like the first step, right? You'd have to do this before you add any color. And then you can take whatever color you want to use. I'm going to bring some red into this. And just lightly, you don't want to press too hard because you don't want the pencil to get into your lines you made. But then you can shade over top and then the white, or again, whatever color, a little complimentary, a little red and green. All right, and then here, I will layer a color. Just to show you, you can layer, you can still layer. All right, and the white shows through. So with a gradient, you can, there's lots of ways to do gradients, but the idea is to fade one color into another color. So I just would maybe pick two colors that you think look good together. You could do like a light blue into a dark blue. You could do a, a temperature change where you go a warm to a cool that can be kind of fun. Maybe like a red, I'm gonna do a red and a blue together, I think would be good. I'll do, I'll do a color shift. So starting on one side, start to go ahead and lay in your color. And it's okay if you don't fill in this entire box. Just gives you kind of space. Oh, I'm picking it, picking up some of those impressed lines. I like to have something underneath, but uh, this here actually. Let's do this. There we go. See, well, there it just uh, taught you to be mindful of what's underneath when you're when you're coloring. So that was a, a good little lesson, anyway. All right, so this is nice and smooth underneath so that I'm not gonna pick up any bad texture. So I'm going to just do a little bit of red and then bring in some blue on this side. And of course, red and blue together are going to make violet, but then I've got a warm color and a cool color. But again, you can do this with any color that you want. Could go light to a dark. 
And then I can just let these start to blend a little bit. I like to scumble, just kind of, again, moving my pencil around in a little circular motion. Now these two together aren't making like the prettiest color, but uh, that's okay. Yeah, this is this is exploration. Sometimes explorations teach us what not to do as well as uh, things we want to do, right? What to repeat, what not to repeat. It's a part of the learning process. And you know, sometimes you want a little bit of a a neutral like this. Honestly, it's uh, instead of a violet, it's almost reminding me of uh, kind of the interactions between complementary colors. But you know, some blues and reds just don't mix together as well as other ones do. So and that's why sometimes with paint you'll see like primary red and primary blue. They're designed to to mix with each other and create the right uh, secondary colors. So. But you can just kind of keep working this, going back and forth, back and forth, and layering. And eventually, you're going to get to a point when you press down and add more pressure that you're not going to be able to really add any more color. So again, that's why it's important to start with light layers so that you can actually build up color. So you get the idea. And I can keep working this back and forth, back and forth as, as much as I can to do that. I can also bring in this blender just to show you. And I can blend or burnish on top. So again, like I mentioned, you can use these other techniques in combination. And just to show you, if the blender gets dirty, I just take it in the pencil sharpener. You know, you have to do like a, a full sharpen, but just like a little twist on the pencil sharpener, it cleans that off. That way you uh, keep your colors nice and clean. All right, so that's the gradient. And then the last thing we have just a little sphere, a little form. Um, I did give a little cast shadow and identify a little light source. And you can do, you could do your same colors as your gradient and do like a temperature shift. You could do a light to a dark. Uh, sometimes, you know what I might do is this uh, kind of a yellow to a yellow green to uh, um, the grass green, like a, a tertiary following the color wheel. So I'm gonna do that and then have kind of a highlight, mid-tone, and shadow. And then I could even bring in a little black with my green or even a little red, do a little complimentary for my cast shadow. So it'll give me a range of color uh, just to kind of practice with this, this form here. So actually, sorry, starting with my yellow. So uh, I'm going to have my full highlight be yellow so I don't have any white space. And I did put, I made this gray just so you could one, see it, and two, get the idea of working on a tone as well. So I don't know, white doesn't necessarily do color pencils any favors in my opinion. I think uh, tones really help enhance the color. I like grays and black especially, but tans can be really nice, different browns. You know, it just depends on your drawing, what you're doing. So I'm just kind of scumbling, keeping it loose. Remember when you're, you're shading forms, you can cross hatch, hatch, scumble. You can do just contour, directional lines. All right, so I've got a little bit of that yellow in there. I'm going to bring in a little bit of this mid-tone. I am going to wrap it a little bit around the back. Just remember, this is a, a form. It is a sphere, so it's wrapping around. Think of like a ball. So we will see a little bit of that kind of mid-tone starting. And I'm just kind of starting to wrap this around, but leave a spot open for the highlight. I 
just continue to bring your mid-tone and I want this all the color to be underneath so that's why I'm bringing it through the whole form I'm not just dividing it up section by section I want it to be again underneath so I'm bringing this all into here you will have a little bit of reflected light remember so you could bring in your yellow a little bit or whatever your highlight color is down on the bottom. And remember, you can bring some of this into the cast shadow as well. I know I did darken that tone already. And we'll discuss shadows a little bit more later, but I'll just kind of put a little bit of each color into that. All right, then I'm going to start bringing in this core shadow and just being mind, mindful of the form. Remember, we are wanting this to look three-dimensional. Even cartoons and stylized art show dimension and depth and illusion of space. So remember, it doesn't have to be hyper-realistic by any means. So you can start to see that develop a little bit, but I, I need to continue to layer this. So that is the part where you want to take your time and have patience and build up those layers. Again, I'm just kind of scumbling. It's like a scribble scumble. It's like one of my favorite ways to shade. But I just allow it to really overlap and I keep my pressure continuous. But again, you, sh you can shade how you'd like to. Bring in a little bit more of this mid-tone. Again, I like to go back and forth. Colored pencils just, you know, it's nice to have the ones you're using kind of out set to the side because you'll go back and forth with them a little bit. It's not just, oop, you use that color and then you're done. It's, you'll go back, back and forth. So now I've got the darker green. It's kind of starting to build this up. And of course you can burnish or use a blender. You can use the white on here to even, you know, give that highlight a little bit more of a pop if you want to. And it's just, it's experimental. It's, it's trying things out. But just remember, shading basic forms is great practice because most things that we want to draw, well, everything we want to draw really, can be brought back to a basic form. So if you're able to shade a sphere, you can shade a basketball or an eyeball or anything that's got a sphere shape or as a manipulated altered sphere. So I am increasing my pressure just a little bit now. Do you need to sharpen? Don't forget to sharpen your pencils. Go back to the thinking about the pressure and the sharpness. That's why that's why I put them on the sheet. Just as a reminder. Now, if I want to darken this up even more, because I'm thinking it's not 
it's not as dark as I want for the core shadow. So I am going to bring, I'm gonna bring a little black into this. I like the, the black and green combo, but you can also use red or whatever complement too. Complements, remember, will darken as well. So for the green, a little bit of red. And just to show you, I mean, I can continue working on this and uh, pushing the color. But I can use the blender too to just help smooth things out if I want to. It just depends. You don't have to have things blended, but you can. So I could keep working on that, um, but I'm just going to go ahead and leave it like that. I'll just add in a little bit of black for the shadow. The other thing to keep in mind, um, paying attention to not just the form itself, but your negative space or background, that has a big factor on your edges because your edges of your form interact with the negative space. So when you see negative space, you're actually seeing the form itself. So sometimes, just to show you a little bit, when we shade the background, it helps push this illusion. So just keep that in mind. Again, I know we're just practicing and just experimenting and trying out some different techniques. But sometimes it can be helpful to see what it looks like with the background in. So again, I'm not going to Spend a ton of time shading this whole thing, but you get the idea. And that is colored pencil techniques. So again, you can try these different things out. Remember, you can use them in combination with each other, uh, but they're just good things to keep in mind as you are using color pencils.